So bet for trading is a cool concept, very similar to day trading on financial markets, you're buying and selling between two prices in the hopes of making a profit. But you're not buying and selling stocks, you're actually buying and selling betting odds. Now you can do this on football, tennis, cricket, and my preferred sport to trade, horse racing. However, the funny thing is, I don't actually know a great deal about the sport of horse racing itself, and it's certainly not a sport that I follow super closely like I do with football. But with that being said, I'm still able to make long-term consistent profits from betting markets using horse racing. Now I can hear you saying, well, if you don't know that much about the sport of horse racing, how are you able to predict which way that the price is likely to move on certain runners? And the way I actually do it is by taking advantage of cognitive bias, in it, and in other words, flaws which human beings make over and over and over again. And the best part is, anybody can do this as well. You don't have to be super, super clever. You don't have to know the sport of horse racing inside out. You know, you don't have to be a whiz kid at maths or anything like that. And for me personally, I started doing this coming off the back of some huge success and some huge profits in the world of match betting and subsequently having my bookmaker accounts state restricted and all my free bets being revoked and all those kind of things. Now, if you're new to my channel and you're wondering what the hell I'm talking about, bookmakers state restricting accounts and taking my free bets away, Unfortunately, it is like a dark, open secret within the betting industry that bookmakers ban long-term profitable customers and profitable gamblers who have a consistent you know, profit stream every single month. I'm not talking about the old guy or girl who wins the big hacker win here and there. I'm talking about long-term, consistent profitability with a mathematical edge over the bookmakers. Bookmakers do, unfortunately, ban those type of customers. So, of course, as I was going through this process of being a match better and making profits off the bookmakers, it was becoming clearer and clearer that I needed to diversify what I was doing. Match betting, you know, is inherently flawed. It's not going to last forever because bookmakers ban winners. It's good in the short term. You can make some nice profits in the short term. But I needed something long term to continue profiting and making money out of the betting industry. So in this video, I want to show you two trading examples that I found on my hard drive recently when I was going back over my trading videos, which where I record the screen. And these two videos will hopefully show you that match betting isn't the only way you can make profits out of the betting industry. And using pre-off horse racing trading, which these two videos are based entirely around, you can actually make profits from doing that as well. And these profits can actually be much more substantial than what they are in the world of match betting. So what I'll do is I'll flip over to my computer screens and we'll go over these two videos and you can see just how fun and just how exciting this can be making profits in just a few minutes. Okay guys, so this is the first example that I've got on screen here. You can see it's a race at Windsor. It's a six furlong novice stakes race. And there's about three and a half minutes until the scheduled post time of this race. So in other words, when the race starts and goes in play. Um, it's from a little while ago. At the time of recording, you can see it was on the 1st of July. And we've got a favourite, what looks like it's um, getting a little bit of backing support. So the favourite's this runner here on the left hand side. What I'd be thinking here is if the price, which is currently 3.2, if that price comes down towards odds of 3 and keeps going down lower than 3, I would expect it to come down to about 2.8 and stall and then head back up. So I'd be saying, okay, if I place a back bet, 3.2, and then a lay bet somewhere near 2.8, I'll back at a higher price than I'll lay at, buy, sell between the two, and I'll net the profit in between those two prices. So my strategy with this one would be saying, okay, I think the price is gonna come down and crash through the crossover point at odds of three. I can see momentum pushing the market down. I'm not seeing backing anywhere else throughout the remaining runners. This is a favorite. It's just above two to one in price. You know, this is an area where people generally start backing runners and gambles can very often take place. But I'm still not seeing enough momentum pushing down on this favourite to warrant getting involved just yet. It's almost there. It's almost time for me to get involved, I think, watching back on this retrospectively. But I'm just waiting for that last little confirming signal to tell me to go involved, tell me to get involved in this one and place my back bet. Once I do, I'm going to be using 200 quid. And there you go, I've put 200 quid into the market, 3.15. We can see on the left now, my profit and loss zone uh, displays a profit and a loss in either direction. Just add another 100 quid to my position as well. So basically, 
As you can see at the top, I've got a £300 stake on this runner. I've just taken 50 off, so now my stake is 250 quid. And you can see the market has done what I expected it would do. It's come down from where it was, down to about 2.8, but it looks like there's momentum pushing it even further. So I'm not cashing out just yet. I'm going to wait until the market stalls and refuses to go any lower before I cash out, because the further it goes down, the more profit I'll make, as displayed in the left in the profit and loss zone on this ladder. And you can see this is a heavy gamble on this runner. If you look at the top, we're already at a 45 pound profit, so I can cash out for 45 quid if I want to right now. But I think it's going to go lower and the lower it gets, the more profit I'm going to be making. So we're at a uh, sticky point in the market here. If it pushes down past this, it'll keep going. I think it will do, watching this back. And you can see the pressure continues to go. We're now at a 60 pound profit if we look at the top. Or oh, there are about, there are thereabouts. Round number 2.5, this could be a point where the market bounces, but there's just so much momentum pushing the price down. I actually think it'll come down a little bit lower. And you can see the profit and loss zone on the left of the ladder represents a free bet. So if I cash out here, I'll have a £154 free bet. But the lower it gets, the larger the free bet I have. And of course, the larger the cash out net profit I have as well, which is obviously displayed at the top. And we're now at a £70 net profit. And this is a really considerable move on this favourite. This has gone way beyond what I thought it would. We've gone past post time. You can see that clock in the top left is gone past zero seconds. I've got live pictures though when I would have been trading this. So I know that the horses aren't just going to start racing right away. I know I've got time to stay in this market and ride this trend a little bit further. You can see I put my last bit of cash in though at 2.22. If the market touches that, I'll have my profit. And you can see it has indeed been touched. And you can see, I believe I pulled the, uh, the bet first screen over to visualize this a bit more. 208 pound free bet on the runner. And of course, if I click cash out, didn't work that time. But if I click cash out, you can see that tallies up to a 95 pound 69p free bet on this runner so as you can tell that was a nice big profit from about two or three minutes work it was more or less 100 quid in profit from very little work at all and i wasn't doing anything overly complicated i didn't i don't really know anything about horse racing i was just anticipating what other people were going to do within the market and i was anticipating that they were going to back the runner in turn pushing the price down so i of course just backed it just before the crowd jumped in and laid it as low as I possibly could and net the profit between those two prices. Now, if you are interested in giving a giving this a go and starting trading yourself, check out the link down below in the description. I've put together a full series explaining how you can go from nothing and understanding very little about how trading works to actually making consistent profits out of these markets where I reveal one of my favourite pre-off horse racing trading strategies within that series. Once again, I'll leave the link down below in the description. And if you are interested in giving it a go and you're sick and tired of wasting money with bookmakers on hackers and lucky 15s and all that kind of rubbish type of betting, for lack of a better way of describing it, or you're a match better and you've been state restricting all your accounts and you've got all your free bets taken away and you want something else to continue making profits out of the betting industry, definitely check out that link down below in the description and you can have a look at it, see if it's for you. And that will give you everything you need to know about starting doing this and making money out of these markets. So moving on to the next trade. This time we're looking again at another race at Windsor. Again, it's a novice stakes race. And rather ironically, this race occurred one day after the previous race, which I just showed you. So the previous race occurred on the 1st of July. This is occurring on the 2nd of July. And we've actually got a similar setup once again. So I'm looking at the uh, second favorite this time. And I can see that the second favourite is traded within a, a small traded range. So only a certain amount of prices of match money at those prices. And I've been noticing there's been a bit of backing activity on this second. There was a little bit more just then. So I'm thinking the same thing as I thought in the previous example. And you can see I've, I've added uh, 100 quid into the queue at 3.4. So I'm backing this runner. I'm thinking the price is going to get shorter if you back at a higher price than you lay at you'll net the profit between the two. So I'm looking at this, I'm thinking price will start here, 
coming down shortly, I feel, watching back retrospectively. And I think it'll come down to about 2.9 or 2.8. And of course, backing higher than you lay, that'll make you a profit. So you can see I've ended up backing at 3.3 because the order got missed in the queue. I believe it was at 3.4. Bit annoying when that happens, but it's all it's kind of a reinforcing sign to you as well, which would suggest that the reason you've not been filled and matched at a higher price is because people are jumping in front of you and therefore obviously they want to back the runner. But yeah, I'm looking at this, I'm thinking the second favourite's gonna come in. The first favourite on the first ladder, you can see that's been drifting out. That was at lower prices earlier on. And that's been drifting out so you can see a kind of a counteraction something else is gonna to have to come down significantly to counteract for that first one going up and I think what we'll see is the second one make its way down to lower levels which of course even when it does will lay at lower levels and will make a profit in between the two so what I'll be thinking with this one if it comes down towards odds of three and it looks like it's going to continue pushing down lower I'll add to the position and add a little bit more money on my back bet. So you can see it's come down towards three. I've put another 100 quid in at odds of three. That pulls the green zone down a little bit on the left hand side of the ladder. And if the price keeps coming down, um, we'll just keep making more profit. So you can see the interaction here pretty clearly. The first one's moving out, the second one's moving down. These two are having the clearest interaction with each other. Typically, this is what you find with horse racing markets. Something comes down, something else goes out to counteract that. And you can see we're on the side of the back bet on the second runner. We could have laid the first runner and the favourite if we wanted. And we would have had a similar setup, just the other way around. But you can see I'm just riding this for as long as possible. Once I feel like it's done, I'll cash out and make my profit. You can see we're at a £80 gross free bet profit or a £33 cash out fully hedged profit. And I'm just watching to see how far this is going to go. I've got one eye on the clock in the top left hand corner. Once that hits zero, that will indicate that the scheduled post time has been hit and the race will be ready for going off at some point. So I'm just trying to make as much profit as I can before that clock expires, although I would have had live pictures um, when I was doing this live. Um, but you can see I've got 150 quid to go. Once I've laid that, I'll have a profit. You can see I've dropped it in there at 232. And even when the price touches that, which it did, I'll make my profit, click up there, and you can see I've locked in 60 pounds of profit on this runner. From once again, backing at a higher price, and subsequently laying it off at a lower price. So yeah, there we have it. If you do want to start this yourself and hopefully start making money like this out of these markets, you know, perhaps you're a match better and you've been gubbed everywhere, or maybe you're someone who's just got a genuine interest in trading and sports and all that kind of stuff, do check out that link in the video description. It's going to have everything you need to get started and it's going to have a really good strategy that works for me very consistently, explained to you step by step by step and I'm going to give you the best execution you can possibly have with that strategy as well. So yeah, guys, that pretty much wraps it up. Next up, I'd recommend checking out this video, which is popped up on screen now, and that will show you how I got into pre-off horse racing trading and all the really annoying, stupid mistakes I made, which I now use to make my profits from all the market participants. But yeah, it's a good watch. Check it out. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you again in the next one.